day we can't. This is Karen Hornsby with Chesterton's Corner. G.K. Chesterton never attended college. Instead, he attended art school in Paris and after graduation became an art critic. No wonder this artist who used words to draw pictures is being resurrected. Higher education is finally discovering what the rest of us have already known. To ignore Chesterton is to proceed at your own risk. Even Notre Dame offers a course on Chesterton. Chesterton on Dickens. The common mind is generally spoken of as meaning the inferior mind, the mind of the mere mob. But the common mind means the mind of all the artists and heroes. Plato had the common mind. Dante had the common mind. Commonness means the quality common to the saint and the sinner, to the philosopher and the fool. In everybody, there is a certain thing that loves babies, that fears death, that likes sunlight. That thing enjoys Dickens. And when I say that everybody understands Dickens, I do not mean that he is suited to the untaught intelligence. I mean that he is so plain that even scholars can understand him. For more Chesterton, go to Chesterton.org. The way. Our catechism. The truth. Holy scripture. The life. Catholic tradition. Now, more than ever. WPYR 1380. Baton Rouge. CatholicCommunityRadio.org. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, Despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. Wake up, Wake up. on Catholic Community Radio. It is indeed time to awaken, O sleeper. It is Monday, September the 14th, the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. The great paradox, oh happy fault, that brought the Savior to us. Good to be with you. I'm Johnny A. Bear with Mr. Jeff Blackwell. Good morning. Good morning, Gabby Chauvin. Good morning. Good to see y'all. And Mr. Gary Zimmick from Cinnamons in New Jersey. Good morning, Gary. Good morning. How are you doing, my friend? I am doing great. I mean, it's a nice, brisk, cold day here. A little uh, unseasonably cold, I think, uh, but uh, I'm wide awake, ready to get started. <laughs> yeah, it's really cold here. It's like, what is it? Yeah, it was actually, like 54. 54, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's what, nice. What does it mean, cold for you? Yeah, Gary. Actually, actually, yeah, <laughs> actually it's about the same. It's oh. in, the mid, in the mid-50s. Oh. Wow. So for once, our weather is lining up. Oh, yeah. man. It's getting to be gumbo weather, but we'll talk more about that oh, later. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it is a very special day today. Yes. Let's uh, let's get our day started off with prayer as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus Christ, by your death on the cross, you triumph over sin and death. Raise our fallen world to the glory no human wisdom can expect. Who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Yeah, we will be hearing a little bit later about St. Helena's discovery of the cross after Christianity was no longer illegal. She went in and found three crosses there in Jerusalem, found the one that was Jesus's because of a healing that occurred almost immediately. Hmm. So there's some other legends about the cross. So stay with us today as we dwell on that. And uh, we have a great uh, lineup today. Right. What we got going we on? We do. Well, we obviously have Gary coming on, and at seven twenty-three, we have Mary Lou McCall with a nonprofit organization called Action Against Addiction. So she has a lot to say about that. We'll talk to her around seven twenty-three. Yeah, and, and Gary, your Bible verse of the day, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. I know you spent a lot of time preparing for that. Yeah, the, Johnny, it's a perfect one for today. It has to do with being content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, and Ooh. calamities. Right? I mean. If, if, if that isn't perfect for today, I don't know what is. We'll hear the words of St. Paul a little later on in the show. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen anymore, does it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. Like three minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I know we're getting ready for the Pope coming. There's all kind of buzz cause starting this week, obviously, is we're just a few weeks away from the mm -hmm. Pope coming, and uh, got to stay tuned here. But, Gabby, any other news you're going to cover with us today? Yes. Bishops welcome a war-drawn group to the United States. 
And the South Carolina governor, you know she's famous for taking down the Confederate flag in her state. Well, she closes three businesses in South Carolina, so we'll talk about what Catholics are really excited about. Hmm. Excited about? Okay. okay. All righty. Well, we're going to do a little different immaculate misconception today. Um, and how is that? The question uh, is, that's a more of a question. Why did Jesus, according to this misconception, visit hell after he died? He descended mm-hmm. into hell. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm glad he came back. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he brought something <laughs> he with him. He brought something <laughs> with him, too. <laughs> on this day in history, we can remember Mary Elizabeth Ann Seton was canonized on this mm. day. And we'll also look back on the reign of a certain pope in some of the early centuries. Uh, Gary, today, most probably the most quoted verse in all the New Testament spoken by Jesus himself, the gospel in one sentence, right? Mm, amen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Looking forward to that. What's it looking like, Jeff? Oh, uh, weather-wise, not quite as cold tomorrow morning, uh, but uh, still, it's going to be a stellar day. We're going to just soak up Monday. That's all there is to it. Uh, great. <laughs> Stay with us. Wake up, get your coffee warmed up. We'll be right back for the Gospels. Wake Up is underwritten by Berryland Campers with two locations on I-12 in Ponchatoula and I-12 in Holden. Berryland Campers is a proud supporter of Catholic Community Radio. BarrylandCampers.com. Wake Up Louisiana is brought to you in part by Drs. James A. Bear and Jacob Henderson at Central Dental Care on Sullivan Road in Central. Catholic Community Radio thanks Central Dental Care for their support. St. Mary's Books and Gifts, the little bookstore with a big heart and a thirsting desire to spread the good news. 225 272 4030. Laura Manderfield Kransky of St. Mary's Books and Gifts is a longtime supporter of Catholic Community Radio. St. Mary's Books and Gifts, located on the corner of Florida and Sherwood Forest Boulevard, 225-272-4030. St. Mary's Books and Gifts. A blessed feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Father Chris, and today's gospel comes to us from John chapter 3. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. We've heard the gospel, and now we reflect. In today's gospel, Jesus employs a biblical figure to explain to Nicodemus how he will reveal the Father and bring us eternal life. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. This is the first of three occasions in John's Gospel where Jesus refers to his death on the cross as being lifted up. The Greek verb for lifted up has two meanings. First, it can mean lift up in a literal sense, as when Jesus will be physically lifted up from the ground during his crucifixion. Secondly, it can also mean lift up in the sense of exalt. Jesus is here using this double meaning word in both senses. When Jesus is being lifted up in ignominy above the ground while nailed to the cross, it will also be the moment of his exaltation, that stupendous moment when he preeminently reveals that God is love. Like the title, Lamb of God, John used earlier in his gospel to depict Jesus. The mention of lift up is an allusion to the suffering servant in Isaiah chapter 53. The Greek text of Isaiah announces that the servant will be lifted high and exceedingly glorified. It also announces that this servant will be 
like a lamb led to slaughter, who took away the sins of many. So in using this double meaning word lifted up, Jesus is teaching Nicodemus and us that the Son of Man who is lifted up is also the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In this passage, which alludes to the bronze serpent raised up by Moses in the wilderness, Jesus unfolds the mystery of the cross. Fittingly, the cross is honored with the corpus that has Christ's arms outstretched. For Jesus lay on the wood with his arms outstretched to show us that he loves us this much. Then our sins drove in the nails. And so while it is true that our sins fashioned Jesus to the cross, it was his love for each one of us that kept him there. Have a wonderful day. This is Jimmy Sagers. Thank you, Father Chris Decker, and thank you, Jimmy Sagers. Apologies there for not being on in the first few minutes, but we're we're back with you. I'm Johnny A. Bear with Jeff Blackwell, Gary Zimak, Gabby Chauvin, mm-hmm. uh, Gary, and uh, everybody. Uh, there was a song I remember hearing of uh, a group called the. Um, I forget the name of the group. Anyway, gospel group. They in the song went, "He didn't lift us up to let us down." <laughs> I don't know. Mm, Gary, yeah. your thoughts on the on the uh, gospel today? Boy, that's that's it's it's a powerful gospel, and uh, as you mentioned before, we did the reading. Th- this contains one of the most quoted Bible verses, the most quoted Bible verse of all times. For God so loved the world that he g- he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. I'll tell you what. Sometimes the problem with that verse in particular is that we see it so much we become desensitized to it, mm. and yet it's it's so powerful. Our Lord did this out of love for us. Because he wants us to have eternal life with him. Did we do, do anything to deserve it? No. And, you know, we continue to do things that don't warrant living with him forever. But he loves us so much. He was willing to endure that suffering for us. And uh, to me, I look at the cross, and it helps me to deal with any problem that I face. Because we look at that, and we look at our Lord's suffering, and we think, how could any good have come out of this? But yet, what he did on that cross brought about all of our redemption. Mm. Yeah, absolutely i was talking to my friend about that last night actually i was just like well i was kind of keeping him up to date with you know just we were just catching up i guess mm-hmm. and we were talking about faith wise and we we're both very strong catholics and i was like you know there's just gonna be good coming out of this dark situation mm. there's always good mm. you know and he was just like that's just so hard to believe but it's true yeah, yeah. you know uh even back in the fourth century i love the way this there was a sermon given on this and uh it was a sermon given by a a uh, priest his name was proclus i it might have been a bishop and in the audience was nestorius who tried to separate jesus's natures uh, into two persons actually and then the manichaeans who just kind of had this whole anti-flesh thing going yeah. on you know and listen to what proclus preached he says this, quoting him now, Listen to the reason for his coming and glorify the power of the incarnate. Mankind was deep in debt and incapable of paying what it owed. By the hand of Adam, we had all signed a bond to sin. The devil held us in slavery. He kept producing our bills, which he wrote on our passable bodies. And there he stood, the wicked forger, threatening us with our debts, demanding satisfaction. One of two things had to happen. Either the penalty of death had to be imposed on us all, since indeed all had sinned, or else a substitute had to be provided, who was fully entitled to plead on our behalf. No man could save us. The debt was his liability. No angel could buy us out. Such a ransom was beyond his powers. One who was sinless had to die for those who had sinned. That was the only way left by which to break the bonds of evil. A mere man could not save, for he would have needed a savior himself. Our affairs were in utmost peril. There was no means of rescue. What happened then? He who was God became man, and he paid the ransom of his own blood. By what he was, he saved. By what he became, he suffered. Oh, what a mystery. 
As man, Emmanuel opened the gates of human nature, and as God, he left the bars of virginity unbroken. Had the word not dwelt in a womb, the flesh would never have sat on the throne. Mm. Listen to that last line. Had the word not dwelt in a womb, the flesh would never have sat on the throne. If that doesn't get you fired up Mm -hmm. and echoes through the centuries, nothing will, right? Yeah, for sure. Mm. So uh, I'm I'm just I'm I'm amazed by <laughs> we this. We don't know what to say. I, that was yeah, just I think like we're, I think we're all speechless. <laughs> oh, happy fall! <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yes. And you know, uh, yeah. it, it is. It took four. It took almost three centuries for the Holy Cross to be found in the rubble after all the persecutions. I mean, uh, the early Christians had to think that they okay. What have we gone through now? And yet, out of the rubble came that cross, and that cross uh, continues to be our sole source of hope. But what a source of hope! We know what oh, happens. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, we're soaking up the weather. This has just been a, a real nice treat. Uh, Sunday was just spectacular. A little bit cool this morning, but the sun is going to be out in full force today. I'd look for a high in the low 80s, low tonight in the mid-60s. Maybe a slight chance of rain tomorrow, not as cool in the morning. It's 7.15 on Wake Up. What's in a name? Berryland Campers offers RVs, fifth wheels, and motor coaches with names recognized in the industry. Cardinal, Flagstaff, Cherokee, Puma, and others. Over 30 acres of RVs and hundreds of makes and models. Sales and service personnel have the experience to help you. Berryland Campers with two locations on I-12 in Ponchatoula and I-12 in Holden. Berryland Campers is a proud underwriter of Catholic Community Radio. On the web at berrylandcampers.com. Lord Wellington Investments is owned by Greg Kennedy, CPA, a longtime friend and supporter of Catholic Community Radio. Lord Wellington Investments serves all of your investment, financial, and tax needs in South Louisiana. From 401k rollovers to financial and tax planning, it's Lord Wellington Investments. Greg Kennedy says, invite others to join you in listening to Catholic Community Radio. Lord Wellington Investments, 225-292-5118. This is Franciscan Media's Saint of the Day for September 14th. Today we celebrate the exaltation of the Holy Cross. This feast celebrates the finding of the cross on which Jesus died. In Jesus' day, a cross was a threat to anyone who defied Rome's authority. Through Jesus' death, it became a symbol of victory. In the 4th century, Saint Helena, mother of the Roman Emperor Constantine, went to Jerusalem in search of the holy places of Christ's life. Among those was the temple of Aphrodite, thought to be built over the tomb of Jesus. Constantine ordered the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre to be built on that site. During the process of excavation and construction, workers found three crosses. Legend has it that the one on which Jesus died was identified when its touch healed a dying woman. That cross immediately became an object of veneration. Both Catholic and Orthodox churches in the East celebrate the exaltation of the Holy Cross today on the anniversary of the dedication of the Basilica. The feast entered the Western Church calendar in 629 after the cross was recovered from the Persians who had carried it off 15 years earlier. There's more about the saints along with inspiration and Catholic resources at our website, saintoftheday.org. From Franciscan Media, this has been Saint of the Day. Well, good morning. It's 18 minutes after 7 o'clock. It is Monday morning here on Catholic Community Radio. And uh, wake up. Johnny A. Bear and Master Control Gabby Chauvin joining us via broadband from Cinnamons in New Jersey. Just across the river from the city of brotherly love, we've got Gary Zemak, Catholic evangelist. And uh, I'm Jeff Blackwell. So there we are. Brown Robin, they call it. Gary, you getting all geared up for the coming of the Holy Father? Boy, I'll tell you what, it's an exciting time around here. It really is. Okay. It's, it's on the news every, it's the lead story on the news every day. So uh, I think the whole city is really excited about it. Are they covering it? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, seeing any twisting, I guess, secular wise from the news? Or is it pretty straightforward, pretty, pretty it, uh, right on? You know, it, it's pretty straightforward, except I, I did notice an editorial in the newspaper today. I think the great thing about our, our Holy Father is he, he's reaching out to those people 
who ordinarily wouldn't want anything to do with the church. Mm -hmm. But I think they're not, they don't realize he's fully Catholic. I don't think they get that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think it's great the way he's building bridges and that he, his message is really appealing to so many people. And hope, hopefully, you know, God willing, he's going to be able to reel some of them in. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be really uh, uh, powerful, too. I, I know he's studying. He's getting up on his English. He's reading about yeah. the United States, some of the issues he's doing here. So he's doing his homework even right now. And on this day, the exaltation of the Holy Cross, uh, uh, we, we talk about the traditions and stuff. That's the thing that, that, that amazed me in that reading that, that you had from Proclus uh, just before the break. Um, this tradition, uh, the Catholic faith, um, is, is the thing that, that enticed me, that brought me in to the church because I'd, I've heard many different versions of that. So this is the time of year. Call your local Catholic church if you are even interested remotely about uh, the faith. What happened after Jesus, you know, ascended into heaven? That's kind of the, my take on it. Uh, and RCIA classes are, are going on all over the place. So uh, you'll find out more. There's no obligation. And it's just one of those things that the, the way it was best put to me was like, uh, we're not going to tell you uh, what to believe. We're going to tell you what we believe and why we believe it. And if you choose to accept it, we welcome you with loving arms. So as Jesus said, come and see. <laughs> Come and see. Oh, that's great. Well, Gabby, what we got on going on else in terms of world and Vatican news? Well, U.S. bishops welcome refugees, part of the civil Syrian civil war. The head of U.S. Conference of Bishops welcomed them in solidarity, saying, quote, I urge all Catholics in the United States and others of goodwill to express openness and welcome to these refugees who are escaping desperate situations in order to survive. He continued by saying that despite religious differences, they are human and looking for a better life for themselves and their families. More than four million percent, <laughs> percent more than four million uh, people of the country have left due to the war outbreak back in March of 2011. President Barack Obama announced that the U.S. will welcome over 10,000 refugees. The Archbishop says that U.S. Catholic charities are ready to take in the refugees with open arms. South Carolina investigates more abortion facilities, and the state found out Friday that three facilities violate state law. Governor Nikki Haley issued an immediate closure to two of them. Many of the employees of the abortion clinic may face criminal charges, and the Department of Health and Environmental Control found 27 violations. Planned Parenthood had 21. The violations dealt with disposed aborted fetuses and sterilization. Ooh, justice. May it come swiftly. Well, uh, on this day in history, Gary and Jeff, this is an interesting uh, story. In the year 891, Stephen V ended his reign as pope. But you know what had happened during his reign? They had a famine so bad, uh, many, many people were in need, and uh, finding the churches basically had no money left. Its coffers had emptied, mm. trying to help alleviate the situation. Well, what did the pope do? He had a wealthy dad, so he went to his father and borrowed a whole bunch of money, <laughs> used his wealth to relieve the poor, redeem captives, and to repair churches at the time. Also, 1975, much more recently, Mother Elizabeth Ann Seton was canonized as the first U.S.-born saint by Pope Paul VI. Yes. And Gary, we've got, we got a question coming up for you, right? Yeah. Hey, Jeff? In fact, I think, Gary, uh, yeah. you're going to be asking a question of... Uh, are, are we bringing extra stress on ourselves? Uh, but um, uh, we're not going to let you talk right now. You'll tell us how to change that in 13 okay. minutes. Okay. 720, okay, very good. 722 on Wake Up. Lisa Flood and Susie McKenzie bring you stories of conversion and reversion to the Catholic faith on the next Kingdom Road. Each week, you're invited to grow deeper in your relationship with Jesus as we live and learn the Catholic faith together. So come with us, meeting divine inspiration from fellow travelers as we journey to heaven together on the Kingdom Road. Don't miss Kingdom Road on Monday at 3.30 here on Catholic Community Radio. Yippee, 723 now on Wake Up. Uh, let's see, uh, our guest, Mary Lou McCall, uh, is, is to be with us here in just a moment. Um, but uh, one of the things that I find, because uh, I don't know if you have... Uh, or, or know of people who have family members that uh, have uh, issues with addiction. Uh, I know in my own family I do. So uh, Mary Lou McCall is with Addiction Against uh, Action Against Addiction, and it's a nonprofit group, and we're uh, uh, trying to get her on the line right this second. So bear with us. We've been promoting it here 
for the last couple of days. Meanwhile, meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, we are uh, making some improvements to our uh, the signal in Baton Rouge 1380 WPYR. So if you um, if you hear intermittent um, uh, in and out loss of signal, uh, just bear with us. Uh, you can always tune to 690 WQNO or online. Catholic Community yeah. Radio.org. There you go. All right. Mary Lou McCall is with us now this morning here on Catholic Community Radio and Wake Up. Good morning, Mary Lou. Good morning. We were uh, just kind of teasing the fact that you're with Action Against Addiction. It's a nonprofit group dedicated to the prevention of substance abuse. Uh, and can you kind of give us a little um, background about Action Against uh, Addiction, uh, how you found it, and what you do? Well, Action Against Addiction is in the business of preventing the brain disease of addiction. Uh, we know that it's a preventable brain disease, just like heart disease, just like diabetes. If you know the health things that you have to do to prevent those diseases, you can also prevent addiction. So what we do is we have a, a state grant and a small private grant, and we go into the school system. We go into Christian Brothers, we go into some Catholic schools. We go, mostly, though, go into the inner city school systems where the kids are really suffering from families who are um, involved in drugs or alcohol, which is a drug, um, and we teach them the brain science of addiction. So if you can teach a child from pre-K all the way up to, let's say, fifth grade how to protect and respect their brain, wearing a helmet, sitting in the back seat with a seatbelt, and then as they get older, it starts talking about things that can damage the brain, making unhealthy choices with their life, including underage drinking. What we know is that if a child drinks, at 15 or under, they are four to five times more likely to become addicted than they if they wait until their brain is fully developed at 21. That is why the legal drinking age is 21. And so I also go out into the community and I speak to parent groups. Um, I'm a big part of the substance addiction ministry, which was profiled in the Clarion Herald this uh, week. Peter Cindy wrote a wonderful article about mm -hmm. Deacon Bauer who also started a support group in Catholic parishes in Slidell, and now there's one in Destrehan, there's a couple in, um, per, one in Pearl River, one in Mandeville, and so it's a, it's a big issue. So on Saturday at 8 a.m., we're going to have a Walk for Recovery at City Park. It's the fourth annual Walk for Recovery. And since I have two sons, five sons, but two sons who are in recovery from addiction, and I'm in recovery from late-life alcoholism, that's the other thing I want people to know. It's not just a gene problem. You can trigger your brain into this um, by the abuse or, uh, of, of alcohol and or drugs. Um, so we are at this walk on Saturday, and everyone in the community is invited because it's to celebrate recovery. There are 22 million people in recovery in the United States, and there are lots more who are not in recovery, but a lot of people who are afraid to talk about it because part of this disease is there's a lot of shame associated with it because there's a lot of judgment against people who right. um, don't understand it, you know. And so we go out there and we celebrate, and there's food, there's music. LSU Health sets up a health fair, and so you can get a, um, a screening, a blood screening. They'll screen your heart also. Um, there's a kid zone for children. Dr. Jeffrey Rouse and Dr. Jeffrey Spitanovich, they're the coroners of Orleans and Jefferson Parish. They'll be out there. Norman Robinson, who was our wonderful anchor on Channel 6 News for so long, mm -hmm. he'll be out there. Meg Ferris will be out there from Channel 4. Um, lots of good people, prevention and treatment. You can go out there and have a good time and also learn about this issue because what we know in New Orleans is that we've normalized drinking. And when we normalize drinking around our children, we teach them that it's okay to do this. And so um, we're just educating parents. Parents are in general good, but we don't know these things when we're young parents. We don't know how we can prevent this from happening. And so it's a great place to learn about that as well. Mm. I know that's a long explanation. <laughs> no, that's great. Real quick, uh, this, yeah. this Saturday at City Park, what time does this uh, get kicked off? What hours does it, it go? Starts at, it starts at 8 a.m. It's a one-mile 5K walk. Um, there's free food. There's entertainment, as I've said. Um, there's going to be food. Marisa's Pastries will be out there. Drago's Restaurant, they're always out there. Cece's is always out there. Bee Blows is always out there. Rouse's provides the water. Crescent City distributing the Gold Ring family. They're giving us lots of drinks and things. Um, there's just all kinds of wonderful things that are going out there. And what I want people to know is this is everyone's issue. And as Catholics, you know, we're Catholic. So as Catholics, what we need to know is when we rewire our brain, 
when we snuff out the light in our soul, it changes the human being that God designed us to become. Mm. And so we're like those people on, on that zombie show where we're driven by this craving, this desire to have the next drink or the next fix. And you'd be surprised about how many people are hiding this disease and afraid and afraid to get help because they're afraid to say, oh, my gosh, because you think it's the person with the brown bag under the bridge. And it's not that person. It's the businessman. It's the doctor. It's the woman in her home raising her children. Mm. You know, a lot of women have gotten addicted to pain pills because they were um, either stressed, either abused, either uh, they were being treated for something, and they got addicted because a lot of times the doctors were giving them too many of these very addictive drugs. Right. And so they cross over into the hard stuff. In the mm-hmm. city of New Orleans, kids can get and, and people can get bags of powdered cocaine, for, I mean heroin, for $20. Yes. And the drug dealers know that if people start sniffing this stuff, the way it reacts in the brain is they want a faster high. And so eventually they'll get hooked to it and they'll start shooting up. And Mary Lou, con- I, yeah? I, I'm sorry to interrupt. We are out of time. How can we quickly okay. find out more? We have a I website. want people to go to our website. It's walk the number four recoverynola.org walk the number four recoverynola.org or just come out at 8 a.m. Saturday this Saturday September 19th all right walk thank you recoverynola.org. we're out of You're time welcome. it is 7 30 on wake up Join the first annual Diocesan Life Fest on Saturday October 10th at the Catholic Life Center beginning at 10 a.m. this year's theme is created in God's image the dignity of the human person Keynote speaker is Brian Butler, co-author of Theology of the Body for Teens. Speakers for the breakout sessions will include Father Josh Johnson, David Dawson Jr., Ariel Rowland, Danielle Van Hout, Sarah Denny on a theology of her body, and Adam Fusile on a theology of his body. There will also be a children's track for ages 5 to 11, music by Greg and Lizzie, Eucharistic Adoration, and the annual Respect Life Mass at 4 p.m., celebrated by Bishop Munch. For more details and to register for this free event, please visit mfldiobr.org. That's mfldiobr.org. Hi, this is Father Chris Decker. You know, sometimes when I'm drinking from my Catholic Community Radio Coffee Club travel mug, I wonder what it would be like to have something else inside. Because there are all these new fancy teas out there like loose leaf and chai tea and white tea and green tea. It turns out that if you become a member of the Catholic Community Radio Coffee Club, you can put tea in that mug. If this sounds good to you, then you'll probably want to visit CatholicCommunityRadio.org for more. Help us support Catholic Radio and drink whatever you like. Catholic Community Radio. Well, I, I think it's filling a need, and I think people are hungry for the truth. And I think uh, the, the more professional we can sound and compete with with the others, and you know, in the marketplace, the more people are going to draw in. Catholic Radio for your community. And that's why the Holy Father, he just mentioned the importance of of Catholics knowing how to work in the media and knowing how to use the media wisely and to use it well. This is your station. The church has for for decades, especially since the Marifica um, with Vatican II, has been on the the front lines engaging the culture and understanding that the media are so important. And so I can't, I, I am amazed at the response we get just because it's just so humbling to be on, on the receiving end of, of the comments and how people have grown and what they've learned. And it's, it's, it's a phenomenal part of the new evangelization. Catholic Community Radio relies on listeners just like you. This is your station. Donate online at catholiccommunityradio.org. Citizens Bank and Trust is a proud underwriter of Catholic Community Radio. Citizens Bank and Trust, with locations in Baton Rouge and Plaquemine, has been a longtime member of the business community for nearly 100 years, providing local, mobile, and online banking with a focus on customer service. At citizensbankandtrust.com. Citizensbankandtrust.com. Member FDIC. This is Life News Radio. I'm Jim Anderson. While the U.S. House prepares to vote on banning Planned Parenthood tax funding this week, Planned Parenthood International is suing Arkansas for diverting 
Planned Parenthood Medicaid payments to other providers. And inspections in South Carolina prompted by recent allegations of misconduct may forcibly close two abortion businesses over violations like improper infectious waste disposal. While California passed legislation to both allow assisted suicide and remove protections from vulnerable persons, the British Parliament has gone the opposite direction, overwhelmingly defeating a bill to legalize assisted suicide. And in other international news, International Planned Parenthood has been caught trying to pressure El Salvador into legalizing abortion. Despite only 2% support for legalized abortion, the communist Local Women's Collective is actively seeking abortion rights with Planned Parenthood help. This is Life News Radio. A new wave of feminism is rising. A new feminism that wants to empower women to honor the natural functions of their bodies and the gifts of their feminine spirit. We are working to create centers that will become havens in our communities for women to grow in their appreciation of their natural selves. It's time to change the face of women's health in our nation. Lighting the way to a culture of life. TheGuidingStarProject.com In other headlines, while chiding pro-life advocates last week, Nancy Pelosi said pro-lifers need to learn the basics of life. Things like birds and bees and, oh yes, abortion, so that they can stop depriving women of such basic needs. And last week, Office Depot said that printing prayers calling for the conversion of Planned Parenthood equaled persecution of Planned Parenthood. After a corporate reversal, this week they will return to printing such prayers for pro-life customers. This has been Life News Radio. Hey, you got a little song in your heart there, huh? Mm. Should. You know why God came as a carpenter? Uh, tell me. Because he can fix anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Johnny A. Bear there. I'm Jeff Blackwell, Gabby Chauvin and Master Control, and Gary Zemak joining us from Sentiments in New Jersey, right across uh, the, right across the uh, the river there from uh, Philly. Morning, Gary. Good morning, Mr. Blackwell. How are you today? <laughs> now I know I'm in trouble. I'm getting called Mr. Blackwell. <laughs> That's right. Um, we had to cut off uh, Mary Lou McCullough. Really, uh, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm Disappointed we had to do that because, man, she was on a roll and she was saying things that really spoke to my heart. But find out more. Her website, again, is walk, the number four, recoverynola.org. Uh, so it's walk for the number four, recoverynola.org. And uh, that walk is this Saturday starting at 8 a.m. City Park in New Orleans. All right. Now, uh, Gary, um, you are always with us on Mondays, giving us uh, a great start to the week uh, with your segment, Be Not Afraid. So, what you got on the burner this morning? Boy, Jeff, I have to say, this this is probably one of my favorite Bible verses today. We're going to look at the words of St. Paul, 2 Corinthians 12.10. And here's what he says. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, I'll, I'll tell you what, brother, this is, I, I, I love this verse and not just this verse but the entire passage where saint paul talks about the thorn in the flesh asking the lord to take it away from him and then the lord came back to saint paul and said my grace is sufficient in other words you can you're going to have some weaknesses you're going to have some issues in your life Mm -hmm. but you need to rely on my grace and with me you can be you can do great things the reason the reason i like this verse and that whole entire passage of that he talks about this is because there are a couple things let me make a couple of revelations on the show How, how's that a couple right. of revelations you might not know about me number one i have problems in my life no i way. have days yeah 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 believe it or not <laughs> not everything goes perfectly for me every day that's number one and the other one is sometimes I'm a really weak person. Okay, there. I feel a lot better. I revealed it to you guys Woo! on the air. But, you know, I do consider myself a really weak person. I'm not someone who is particularly strong when it comes to matters of faith. I don't have the strongest faith in the world. I have some physical things that get in the way sometimes, you know. Sure. But here's the thing. When I read this, I remember that it's not all up to me. And that, I think, Jeff and Johnny, and I think sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves thinking that if I'm to become holy, I've got to do it all by myself. I just have to fight and not sin. If I want to stop worrying, I'm going to do it all by myself. 
if I, you know, no matter if I'm going to deal with my daily problems, I, I have to fix them. I have to fix them on my own. And we forget that the Lord wants us to lean on him. And the weaker we are, that's okay, the more work God is willing to do. He wants us to work. He wants us to do what we can, but he also wants us to lean on him and lean on him heavily. So, so when I hear a verse like this, I feel a lot better, and I feel powerful because I know that I have the Lord on my side. And no matter what happens to me today, he's still in control, and he can get me through it. Did you, did you happen to pick this because it's the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, or I, was that just a coincidence? Johnny, that is the way the Holy Spirit works, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I love it. This happens so many times. I didn't. But yet when we look at this feast today, and we look at what St. Paul is saying, it matches up perfectly. You know, and look at insults, hardships, persecutions. That's exactly what, what our Lord went through. Yeah. You know, we look at his life and we think, wow, you know, I think I have it bad. Look at his life. Look at St. Paul's life. Look at the life of the Blessed Mother. Look at the lives of the saints. I mean, these people didn't have it easy. It's not as if the closer we get to the Lord, the easier we're going to have it. No, we're going to have a, I mean, I hate to say it, but sometimes we get a heavier cross the closer we get to him. But when we have a cross, he's going to give us the grace to bear it. And I think that's a hard thing for many of us to understand, especially people like me who don't especially like suffering. You know, I, I think, well, I don't really need an extra cross, but if the Lord gives me a cross, he's going to give me the grace so that that cross can almost become sweet and easy to carry. Mm. It, it's definitely a paradox, not easy to understand, but those of us who have been through it, we get it, and we realize that, yeah, in the, in the times of my life when I had the greatest crosses, well, that's when I felt peaceful because I felt the Lord was carrying me at that time. Mm. Well, talking about a paradox, certainly you turn on the TV, open any magazine, uh, and you see all this uh, promoting of self-worship, self-esteem, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. picturing mm -hmm. yourself being says, channel the energy, yoga, whatever it might, might yeah. be. You can, like, self-generate some kind of love. Embrace yourself. Hold yourself. Uh, you know, and so this is a very radical uh, and ever new message, right, to a world that needs, gosh, you'd think by now we would, we would have learned we, we can't lift ourselves up, Gary, but the gospel and this this gospel, this uh, verse here from the New Testament, it echoes true even now, right, more than ever. It really does. It really does. And the message of the world is you can do it. You can be strong enough. You can succeed all by yourself. And, and that's so wrong. And uh, it, it's almost to, to a guy like me, and, and I, I'm not really joking about that. I really am somebody who never considered himself to be particularly strong. I could never, when I try to become holy, when I try to turn to the Lord, eventually I'd give up because it would be too tough for me. And when, when I look at the message of St. Paul like this, it, it kind of empowers me, but not believing just in myself, but believing in the Lord that he can take somebody like me who mm. is weak and use me to do good, to do great things. Yeah. But that's all him. I mean, that's not me. It's him working through me. Uh, Gary, let me ask you about, because I've had people who said, look, you know, if, if it's just as easy as tr just trusting in the Lord, then do I become complacent? I'm just like, well, well whatever happens, yeah. you know, God's going to take care of it. So uh, how do you address folks like that? That's, that's a really good point, Jeff. And that comes up a lot. And, and w what I do, and I speak about this when I give my, my talks, mm -hmm. if you look at the way Jesus worked, when he fed the 5,000, certainly he miraculously multiplied five loaves and two fish. But he didn't just create the food. He said, give me what you have. Mm -hmm. In other words, do what you can. Give me your five loaves, two fish. I'm going to do the miracle. Multiply them. Now, you apostles here, take them and give them out. So he wants us involved in, in his works. He, he wants us to do what we can to help ourselves. If we look at the wedding at Cana, the same thing. He said, well, give me some water fill it up here. He told the servants, fill sure. up this jug with water, and then I'm going to turn this water into wine. So he wants us to cooperate with him and not just sit back. So I need to do the best I can, which might not be a lot. I mean, I'm, you know, I can only do so much, True. but I need to still do the best I can, and I can't just sit back and wait. It's, it's like when I first graduated from college, my father told me I had a hard time getting a job, and he said, don't think somebody's going to come knocking on your door to offer you a job you've got right mm -hmm. yeah. you, and you know he was right I had to get out there and look and that's what the, it's the same thing with the Lord but sometimes our efforts are are not that much that's okay 
we still need to do what we can, and then he'll multiply that there you go. and Take do great that. things. I love, how, step. I love how St. You know, St. Paul is giving this sermon today, and if anybody kept moving, <laughs> it isn't like he sat back and oh, said, I'm yeah. content. No, he was on yeah. the move constantly, even with a thorn beating in his, That's in right. his flesh. Mm. And, 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 and Jeff, I was thinking, and Gary, too, about the, just talking about addictions. Boy, people who have gone through addictions, this verse here has got to be, I mean, this has been proven to over and mm -hmm. over again the first step, right? Yes. That uh, I cannot do this on my own. There you There's go. a higher power. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, uh, first of all, before we get to how to get in touch with you, Gary, uh, you're going to become a turn neck of the woods uh, in November. Um, uh, have you ironed out the dates yet? I'm, I, guess I really don't know. He said know. November 30th because I asked him before. Oh, really? <laughs> November 30th. That's, that's right. Uh, okay. That's right. That's right. And I'm not I'm not leaving after one day. I'm staying for three days after that. I'm heading down to Karen Crow, too. So I'm going to be in the air. I need to get oh, my share of gumbo. Okay? I, <laughs> no, it's perfect gumbo weather then. It should be cold that's by then. right. <laughs> yeah. Well, good, good, good. All right. And uh, we're going to get you to cut a spot for us and to, to – to uh, promote that event coming up here uh, on Catholic Excellent. Community Radio. Good. So Excellent. how do we get in touch with you? Jeff, the best place is my website, followingthetruth.com. All right. Gary Zimak, Catholic evangelist. Uh, Be Not Afraid Monday here. So uh, thank you, Gary. God bless you. And don't go anywhere. Thank you, Jeff. We got I will. I'll be right here. <laughs> okay. Here. Hey, our weather today, just spectacular. It's gorgeous, darling. Uh, sunny skies today, some light easterly winds and high in the mid-80s. Not as cool tonight, low in the mid-60s. And a chance of rain, eh, I hate to say it, but there's the forecast tomorrow. It is now 745 on Wake Up. Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We establish orphanages and help the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world every hour of every day whenever we celebrate the Mass. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first Pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith, and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home. Oh, yeah, rev it up. <laughs> yes. It's a Monday, which means who knows what the Lord has in mind for you this week. Where <laughs> will his face be? What person we will meet today? What instance? Where will the Holy Spirit take us on his wings? Ah, that's why it's so good to be alive. I'm Johnny Aber with Catholic Community Radio with Gabby Chauvin, Mr. Jeff Blackwell, Mr. Gary Zimak this morning. And uh, here's, a, here's a thought for the day. Ignorance may be bliss. Unless you have no idea how much God does love you. Uh, Gabby, what we got going on in national news? Well, um, I really talked about the national news kind of in a earlier today Sorry. around 720, but I wanted to save room for announcements. Announcements, we mm -hmm. have some. Uh, join the Knights of Columbus to help seminarians and diaconate candidates to a dine-out night at Applebee's in Harahan on Wednesday, September 16th from 11 o'clock a.m. to 11.59 p.m., Contact Keith Lawson at 504-666-0094 for more information. 
and and by the way, it is important to contact Keith because you, mm-hmm. if you have the flyer and you take it into the restaurant with you, uh, then they get credit for for that. So make sure you get in touch with Keith. What's the number again, Gabby? It's five zero four six 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 zero zero nine four, and that's right. Keith. And a series on the dignity and vocation of women invites all women on September 17th and 24th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at the Retreat Center in New Orleans. Sponsored by Notre Dame Seminary, contact Susan Halligan at 504-267-9604. A retreat for families with children ages 7 to 17 is being held on September 26th and 27th. This is a great way for families to explore the sacraments and grow closer with God. The retreat is held at St. Joseph's Abbey in Covington. Space is limited. Contact Jason Angelette at 504-830-3716 for more information. Yay. We are joined with Gary Zemeck. Uh, Gary, you can follow him at followingthetruth.com. Gary, I'm just curious, what you got coming up here in the next week or two? Where are you going to be? What are you going to be talking about? Actually, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm home for the next couple of weeks, which is a really good thing because I just signed a contract tonight to write a new book. So I'm going to be working hard on my oh, new that's book. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really thrilled about that. What's the, the title and the theme of your book? Or do you, you know have what? a working this is, title? Is this well, a, wor- a working title is, you're going to love this one, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. And it's a devotional. It's a daily devotional designed specifically for warriors, oh. which is something I've, I wanted to do for a long time. Oh, a, a, yeah. a Bible verse every day. So I'm in the process now of coming up with 365 verses so that... Um, you That's know, a so good that Christmas can, gift. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when it's going to be coming out, but uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Oh, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Okay, you have a question for Johnny, I think? I, I so, always do. Okay, yeah, well, it's don't. Mon- Monday, you know. <laughs> All right, let's do this intro. You got your hula skirt ready. It's 7.51 <laughs> on Wake Up. And now, as an apologetics public service, Wake Up proudly presents Immaculate Misconceptions. All right, Johnny, here we go. And I have to say, all kidding aside, this is a question that that has always intrigued me. I I, I remember thinking about this for a long time and wondering, why did Christ visit hell after his death? Yeah, you know, I remember the first time I heard that, too. You know, what was the point of that? Well, when you say the prayer, when you say the, like, I actually looked it up in the, like, in the, in the prayer like pamphlet thing they give out at mass to help you follow the prayers. And I was like, wait, am I reading this right? When I was yeah, little, yeah, I read it again. Yeah, I was like, why yeah, would he do sure. that? Yeah, did he go yeah. down and shake his finger at him? But then you say, <laughs> but then he, he let the prisoners free, so he emptied it out <laughs> as it was vacant mm. for a while. I mean, how does that work? You know, but actually, there's a great answer on Catholic Answers. You know, he didn't actually visit hell. If what you mean by mm. hell is the place of the damned, there would have been no purpose for him to go there, you know, so we do read in the Apostles' Creed that line, descendit ad inferos, and what that means is literally as hell, but it goes back to what it was understood to mean. The term actually refers to those below, that is, to the dead. So it signified that he descended to visit the ones who had died prior to his coming. But here's the thing, at the time, this word, at the time, the understanding, the meaning was uh, for the Hebrew, it was shol, and the Greek word of that is Hades. means the same things. Mm-hmm. That, in general, means the abode of the dead. Now, when you translate mm-hmm. that into English, it comes across as just hell. I mean, there's no distinction at, at all. But literally, you know, uh, in, in terms of what uh, it was understood, that hell was actually, or Hades, I'm sorry, shol, was actually a separation of two places. In fact, we read about this, uh, Jesus talks about in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. You may remember that. Yes. About the, there was this great chasm between Abraham, you know, how the, 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 the uh, beggar was at, on, uh, next to Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom was also translated as paradise. So it was this place where the just had gone, and there was this chasm between them and the, remember the, the rich one who was in hell. Right. So there was these two separate places, paradise, Abraham's bosom, uh, in Shoal, and then there was the place where the damned were. In fact, you may remember even when Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise, that yes. word there had the same referral. Again, mm-hmm. Jesus also referred to this, we was talking about Jonah being, he, he said, as Jonah was in the whale's belly for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man 
be in the heart of the earth. And as you read that, that term means the underworld, what the Jews, again, would call Sheol. So a Sheol wasn't a place of the damned, but a place where departed souls had gone, both good and bad. But in this area of this region of Abraham's bosom were all the just, the, the good, the saints, if you will, of the time. And so when Christ, uh, when Peter wrote in Peter 3.19, he says this, Jesus went and preached to the spirits in prison. Well, this does therefore refer to hell in the general sense where the departed souls rested prior to his coming. Mm-hmm. And But this was uh, in the catechism we read, this is where the, the just had realmed in that, in that area of Sheol where they were not in hell. They were not the damned. They were ones that were in a, Abraham's bosom waiting to be saved. And those are the ones that Jesus rescued and delivered into heaven. Mm-hmm. So if you go, you know, it's the really short answer to this is in the catechism just go to the catechism 632 and and here's what it says it says jesus like all men experienced death and in his soul joined the others in the realm of the dead but he descended there as savior proclaiming the good news to the spirits in prison there it is precisely these holy souls who awaited their savior in abraham's bosom whom christ the lord delivered when he descended into hell Mm -hmm. jesus did not descend into hell to deliver the damned nor to destroy the hell of damnation, but to free the just who had gone before him, again held in the Abraham of bos- in the bosom of Abraham. That's the difference, right, Gary? Your thoughts mm, on that? That is. That is. That's a great answer. Thank you, Johnny. Mm-hmm. Well, Gary's got to go. And it also, real quick, but, well, yeah. it makes purgatory a little easier to understand. <laughs> if there can be <laughs> different does. places where people That's are right. being ready, purged, That's right? right? All right. That's right. Well, Gary, you're heading off to Mass, uh, and we thank you for taking us along with you. And uh, God bless you, my friend, and we will uh, visit with you next Monday. Thank you so much. Great to be with you all. Take care. God bless. All right, brother. Thanks. Work on that book. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> See you guys. All right, bye. Uh, and tomorrow, Gabby, who we got coming up uh, tomorrow? Are tomorrow you we have, well, Katie does her segment oh, that's right. Katie tomorrow Richard, tu- sure. on Tuesday. Uh, we also have Afton and Stefan Sylvester talking about their Kickstart program or event that they're it's not really an event um i'll talk about it later tomorrow but they have he's starting this band and he was inspired by his wife's illness with cancer and uh, they're a young catholic couple very good friends of a lot of people here so Mm -hmm. looking forward to talking with them yeah afton uh rosenblum Mm-hmm. Sylvester now uh, so uh, uh, what a what a terrific couple with uh, just a, a wonderful testimony and uh, I mean they just gotten started uh, mm-hmm. in, in in their marriage so uh, this is terrific and we look forward to hearing from living in Alabama now is that right mm-hmm. yeah all right good stuff well remember the the gospel today for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life thank you oh Lord today yeah. the exaltation of the cross Sometime today, just take a few minutes and contemplate on that cross. Yeah, that was the first Bible verse I ever memorized as a kid, by the way. So, yeah. Like, Good one to remember oh, yeah. and to continue to remember. So let's, <laughs> let's go out in, in prayer as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, who will that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant, we pray, that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 And this short little line here, I love this. Whenever anyone who had been bitten by the serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived, and the Lord said he was lifted up. Just as that serpent, bronze serpent, was lifted up, so he was lifted up and he continues to lift us up from wherever we may be. So remember, if the kingdom of God is difficult to see, it's only because its citizens are hard to find. May we all be citizens of the kingdom this day, this week. Have a great day, everybody. God bless. Wake up is a production of Catholic Community Radio. Hi, I'm Laura Mandeville Kransky. St. Mary's Books and Gifts, located on the corner of 